when I'm looking at the conservation of momentum, let's consider a situation where I have two TIE fighters and they're moving towards each other and they collide and then afterwards they do something. They either move apart, they move together, whatever. So the first thing I need to think about is the force. So the force of, and that's not a Star Wars pun, on this TIE fighter by this TIE fighter is going to be equal to the force the other way around. So the force that TIE Fighter 1 exerts on TIE Fighter 2 is going to be equal and opposite to the force that TIE Fighter 2 exerts on TIE Fighter 1. That's just using Newton's third law. So now if I change the term, so I know that force is equal to the change in momentum over the change in time from what we talked about earlier, therefore I can rewrite this expression in terms of F in terms of momentum. So therefore, the change in momentum 1 over time is going to be equal to the change in momentum 2 over time. And I can expand this out further and, and rewrite the P's, but firstly notice that I've got delta T on the bottom in both sides. So if this was to move up here, they would cancel out. So the delta T's vanish. So if I just expand my P's, I get P1 final minus P1 initial is equal to P2 final minus P2 initial. Remember the T's have cancelled out and I've just expanded out what the delta means. Now if I go a step further and I can write what the P is, P is equal to M1 V1 final minus M1 V1 initial on the left. The right hand side is going to be equal to M2 V2 final minus M2 V2 initial. And important here to notice is that remember I said it's equal and opposite. So this is equal to the negative. This is also equal to the negative. And the most common mistake people make is they put the minus and they don't bracket it. It's negative everything. So same thing here. It's minus the entire expression. So if I expand out the negative, the right hand side becomes minus M2 V2 final plus M2 V2 initial. And the left hand side remains. It is M1 V1 final minus M1 V1 initial. Now I can rearrange this a little bit if I wanted to. So I've got a negative here and I've got a negative here. So if I move this to this side and I move this to this side to get rid of the negatives, I end up with quite a nice expression. So if I keep this, I've got my M1 V1 final. I've now added, because I've moved it across, M2 V2 final and on the right hand side I'm going to have my plus M1 V1 initial plus because it always was M2 V2 initial and this is where it starts to look good because this is saying M1 V1 final plus M2 V2 final is equal to M1 V1 initial plus M2 V2 initial I could put this other way around and say the initial equals the final, like just by flipping left and right, but it doesn't really matter. But what I can see here is that this and this is the entire system before and after. So remember, if you look at this, I can break it back into this is M1 V1 final. So this is final momentum and this is final momentum but it's for different objects. So that means that it's equivalent to the momentum final of one plus momentum final of two, and that's equal to the momentum initial of one plus the momentum initial of two. And if I flip that around just so it's, it's more intuitive, it makes a bit more sense the other way around, that says that the initial momentum of 1 plus 
the initial momentum of 2 is equal to the final momentum of 1 plus the final momentum of 2. And again, this is the entire system. So before they've collided, the momentum of TIE Fighter 1 plus TIE Fighter 2 is equal to, after the collision, the momentum of TIE Fighter 1 plus the momentum of TIE Fighter 2. So you can see here that the momentum is always equal. Whether it's elastic or inelastic, it doesn't matter. Momentum is always conserved of the system. And the main thing here is we're assuming it's an isolated system. So that means there's no air resistance and there's no external forces. So therefore, the momentum is always conserved.